Okay, so in part one of the video, I've stated basically in 10 minutes that I've had a problem with my postal delivery here at my house uh, where I live in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This part I'm trying to uh, basically substantiate and, and kind of itemize what, I, what has gone on, the problems with my delivery here. When I first moved in here in 2011, um, I had a one-man business at home. I had a local business license and I was insured to do small computer repair. Most of my business was from just cleaning up computer messes, but sometimes, well, about actually about 20 to 30 percent of it was hardware repair where I would order a part for a customer and install it, like laptop screens, memory upgrades, hard drive replacement, things of that nature. So uh, I've always realized the value of postal delivery and the importance of it without overstating it. My, my aunt is a postal worker. Uh, she's a carrier in a rural route in, in Kentucky where she lives and uh, I've always respected her and looked up to her, especially the job that I would think that she would do considering the fact that she never down talks her customers or is bitter about her job. Uh, any stories she has shared uh, would be along the lines of the, the one customer who does not remove the wasp nest. That's that's my favorite story of hers because finally she got to where she felt like she should. I don't remember how that one worked out, but she didn't blow the customer's mailbox up. This is a respectable woman who does respectable work, and she's done it for like 30 years. This is her, her career, and she's probably one of the best carriers in the state. I wouldn't doubt it, and uh, I've always looked up to her, so I would, claim, I would think she probably handled that uh, as well as anybody could and just got her boss to deal with it or finally got to the customer to do it. All right. So, in my family, I happen to respect people who, who are uh, blue collar and, and uh, working middle class people. My mother was a teacher. My dad was a, worked in a print shop, like old printing presses, for 35 years. My mother was an English teacher and later a, a local public school librarian. So, these are people who didn't raise an idiot, but they also didn't raise a disrespectful person in me. All right, so I've already I've I've worked since I was 18. Actually, since I was 12, I was a paper carrier when I was a 12-year-old to uh, to the middle of uh, my 13th year in this world. And I've never, you know, I never disrespected people. Is the modern term uh, who work for a living, who really work hard. Okay, so uh, one thing I noticed is is when I moved in here, I. Uh, I have a long, I'll have a long driveway. I didn't know how my packages were going to be delivered here, and I was a little worried about it. But those fears were later, concerns were laid to rest. I thought the first time I had a delivery, uh, I happened to be out on the driveway, and I was working outside. It was the summer or spring or something, and the lady rolls up the driveway in her vehicle, which at the time she had the classic old Jeep that someone might own themselves, and uh, she comes down the driveway and uh, she greets me and I say hi and she says I, I think I overstated how friendly I was and she had her sub with her and basically I can give people that impression my cat's at the window now but basically I can give the uh, people the impression of anything from maybe you know a little pushy to a megalomaniac depending on who you are and how what type of personality you have but the only thing I said the first time I met her was Hi, my name is some, you know Mike Denny, and it's very nice to meet you. I uh, just wanted you to know I have a small one-man computer business here. I know you're busy, but uh, any packages that you deliver, let me know where you're going to put them and where you commonly deliver stuff, and I will work to make sure. Uh, I only get like two or three packages a month with my small one-man business. This won't be too much, I hope, and blah, blah, blah. And it was all niceties, okay? It was all coming from me. It was, I think it was just overly nice. What happened was she bluntly stared at me as if she was like one of these. Then she, it was classic, she's driving on the wrong side of the vehicle like they do. This, this is her, her own customized Jeep. And she looks over at her sub, who's like about 20, 25, and she smirks at her and snickers as if now they have a new uh, foil or something. They, this guy's an idiot, but this is going to be fun, whatever happens. And this guy's a little talkative for, for a dude, right? So I figure, moving on, I got my package from her and everything was fine because I'd met her out there. Uh, I'll discuss why I said, well, basically I say that because that was probably the last time I, she ever delivered a package correctly for me without a hassle. I got them thrown uh, in the, I got them thrown on the front porch. Whenever she, she drove 
up my front porch uh, sidewalk to deliver one on the front porch she got out of the vehicle to chuck it you see the video where this person I think it's a YouTube video that goes something like uh, the laziest postal worker ever that one doesn't even get out of the vehicle this lady consistently got out of her vehicle to then chuck it with a high arch as high as my front porch ceiling would allow so it would clap down hard it started doing that anytime I was even in the house she she did it kind of demonstratively to let me know how things were really gonna be this was her route it's her way or the highway and so what if I had a little compute cutesy computer job where I had parts coming in uh, routinely this this happened with two or three laptop screens and I would be home and I would hear the loud clap of cardboard and she had to be actually the weirdest part is she had to be good at being bad like the South Park episode where the boys try to throw their little league postseason to get out of playing baseball because they're they're young and they want to play video games this woman did not want to do things right and if I was going to be cutesy and a talkative overly nice maybe even a feminine male I was going to pay the price because this is the way she does it that's the the origins of the situation I, I think hi hi Morty anyway this started happening on a routine basis. Again, just three or four packages a month, two or three, not really much. But when I ordered something for myself, uh, I remember in the first year, I ordered some baseball cards. And they came in a cardboard box. This was a, an auction, like eBay. And instead of putting them on the front porch where she said she was, she had told me during our first meeting, I'm not good at videos, but she had told me the first time I met her, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to drive up your your sidewalk. I'm, I always get out here and just toss it on the front porch, and I was just fine with that. Because there wasn't any demonstrative, you know. It, it, my front porch is at, eye, or at waist level. You don't even have to bend over much to make sure it doesn't make that loud noise. And I'm not even being picky about it. These were, these were specific incidents that started piling up. The very next delivery happened to be those baseball cards. She didn't even go by her rules. And I've only got like three minutes left in this video, so I'm just going to reel these off here. The next delivery was left in the rain at the side of the house. That's not even close to where she said she was going to deliver it. Uh, the first year, I never complained. Not once, not to her. I've never complained to her. Let's settle this because I have a part three of the video. Never to her have I mentioned it except one time and I want to state that in part three and I want to state it just as I said it. I think I may have already stated it in part one. Uh, the part where she was telling me to re-gravel my driveway and I just told her in a matter of fact tone I can't believe you know you should go on about how much I should kowtow to you when you never you've given me such hassle in my mail delivery and I did it in normal speaking tone that's it. Okay so all along the first year I never complained to her not that that was like well on into the third second or that was the third year where we had that interaction one time one time all along the first year every time like I said in the first video every time she touched my mailbox she left it open the tax documents were scattered in the road wet uh, this happened numerous every time the tax documents came she seemed to enjoy waiting and kind of picking her fights and anytime vital information came like not just ads or in the little card ads or something those are always perfectly delivered she made sure those were flawlessly delivered and yet the important items like important bills that were still coming in the mail those were never ever delivered correctly the mail was always open and on the road or blown out um, about midway through my time here about two years ago I had a package where she uh, left the mailbox open and somebody uh, from a neighboring trailer park finally gave in to uh, the temptation after seeing my mail and packages of you know uh, exposed for t two years someone finally gave in and uh, stole it's twenty five dollars worth of crap useless crap to anybody else because it's a technical gadget and a, and a vacuum cleaner filter and they probably got it home and were like oh god the last time we steal from that guy uh, however, it cost me $25, and you better believe there was no insurance on it. So they told me at the po local post office and the local no and the 1-800 number, we're sorry, but you know, it's just you're not going to get that back. And I had to mention that she had always had this this habit of leaving my mailbox open. So I'm about to go to part three of my video. We're going to move on to another instance and and what's happening now.